the thing about wheelchair rugby league is it's not like rugby league where you can buy and sell players and bring people in it's it's you the players you have in your team are the players who really want to be there and they're passionate about being there so you've got to work with what you've got and then you build a team around the players you don't come up with a, a specific way of playing and try and force your players to to fit that narrative is you adapt to how you play on the players you've got and if that means yes you've got to move a few people to where they're not used to playing because you think that will be better then then that's what you do. Paulson still going, Bashara waits, here he is. Boardman on the stretch, this is nice from Halifax, what a try. Yeah that's another, like I said, they go two down one way and it's straight hands. The game is so fast, you compare it to the rook in the running game is we don't have a nine, so you essentially play the ball straight away and then you're on, you, you, you lose that two or three seconds of the nine reading what's going on. So your halfback almost has to be a halfback and a nine because they're getting the ball and then they need to know what's going on already. So it's reading that game, knowing where you need to be and when you need to be there, knowing when to, right now I'm a winger, now I'm in the middle, now I'm doing this. It, it's, it's seeing what's in front of you and having to read it fast. You've got to look at what's going on in front of you, what's on the edges, and then read what's going on and then react to it. Right. Take Roberts. Needs to go all the way. Lovely ball. No, now they will it. score in nice, the corner. Really nice, Norris yeah. finishing off a sweeping move, all about the ball from Dick Roberts. You've only got five players, and when you're moving up and you're in your half, you, your wingers almost become back rowers because you're using them to get you further forward, to get extra metres. But then once you get into good ball and you're in the opposition's half, that's where your wingers kind of become out and out wingers. So you've got to almost train your players to do two jobs. So when you're moving up the field, your wingers are coming in, they're taking carries, but less of like a running game kind of winger where it's direct. You need them to be a bit more, you know, get a bit more meters. And then once you get into their half, they'll split. So you need players to be specialized in their roles, but you also need them to be able to switch and adapt and fill in for another role if they want. I think in the past few years, halfbacks have become more of a thing in wheelchair rugby league. Before it wasn't really, you just had fast players shooting around, but now you've got people like Tom Halliwell, uh, Deck Roberts, who were genuinely out and out halfbacks, and then you, you give them the freedom to do what they do and then support them. So you build a bit of a team around the way they're going to play and you direct them how you want them to go. And it's, it's, it's not at that stage of the game yet where. Bashara on the charge over the top. He's picked it up. He'll go the distance. <laughs> They've returned the favour, those two. Bashara from Borson this time. I think more so in wheelchair versus the running game, it, it can change. And especially when you look at like eight meter restarts, which would be a 20 meter restart. If, you're, if you give away multiple eight meter restarts, the game is so fast and you can gain meters so quickly that, that can be, they, a, an opposition can have an attacking, an opportunity on your line off the back of that. So that comes down to how good your kicking is. Do you know, are you keeping the ball in play? If it's running dead, that's something you need to change. And like you said, when you've got a, when you've got a hard floor and a, and a ball that's hitting it, it can go anywhere. And sometimes kicking has to be so, precise and intricate to keep it from going out because as soon as you give an eight meter restart you you know you you've you're under the pump then you haven't defend seven tackles and then they're on your line and then you've suddenly got to work out so you can be attacking their line with everything you've got throwing everything at it thinking the pressure's going to go and they're going to break give away an eight meter restart and then you're defending your line with six tackles later and then you've got to come away from your line it's, it's like almost an attacking opportunity, it just suddenly switches and now you're defending and now you're having to do the hard yards and come out as well. <laughs> oh, big contact from Collins to halt a certain London try. If you watch a really good defence, you can almost put a rope through them all and they're moving the same, they're all turning the same way at the same time. And one of the big differences is nobody can run over you or push over you. So you get in front of someone, turn your chair, they can't, they, you've stopped them, they can't go through you but it's doing that together. So when you see a really good defense, you can see them. Nobody's looking at each other, but you can see them talking. Everyone's talking. Everyone's turning the chairs the same way. And it's, it's, it's genuinely like artwork to watch a really good defense. And you've got to be, you've got to work as well. As soon as the tackle's made, you've got to get back. You've got to turn, you've got to go again. More so, I think in wheelchair, because there's only five of you, it can't be a case of right, well, I'm going to switch out with these players now because I need a bit of a break. So I've defended in this position for five sets. You've, you've just got to keep turning up and, and, and turning up and getting off there and getting off the line. And, and big games are won on defence. Like, that's the same in most sports. Like, you, you need to keep them out. You need to keep them away from your line. 
but watching a really good defence, watching them talk, watching the players talk, watching how connected they are, it's, it's brilliant to watch. And when I watch video footage back and I can see my team doing it, I'm like, I'm like, that, that's brilliant, that's amazing, that's exactly what we want. Tom Halliwell wearing the seven of his sporting idol Rob Burrow as London dab one over the top and this could be the first score of the game because London are going to get them and touch down right through the post. Big games and one on nobody making a mistake, one on great and determination and you look at the World Cup final, you look at a lot of the close grand finals and things we've had that it has come down to small margins and I know that's a bit of a cliched answer and everyone says that but you think about that World Cup final they had players who had played 80 minutes at France, and in the 77th minute when Tom scored, the player who missed the tackle had been on that pitch for 77 minutes, no interchange. So then you throw in the fact that they're fatigued in a World Cup final, one small mistake, one small margin, and it cost them the game. And that's where it goes back to that, that knockout kind of game that nobody wants to make a mistake. You make a mistake in wheelchair rugby league and it costs you a lot. And then that World Cup final, one little missed tackle, Tom goes through and scores and then the, the game's over, the game's done. But you've got to know, you've got to have belief in yourself that you can you can hold it, hold your nerve, hold hold it, belief in each other that you can front up and keep fronting up. And when the opportunities arise, you can go for it and you can strike, you're not too tired, you're not too, you haven't lost that much focus that you can really go for it. When, when it's there in front of you, you can still go for that even in the 77th minute.